Okay, so if you find yourself into a comfortable seat, you're going to start sitting this morning. So um, sit on something if that helps you to be comfortable. I need to try to prop this up somehow so that I can see you. There, that's better. Okay, so sit on something, whether you want to sit cross-legged or not is your choice. I don't mind how you sit. I don't even mind if you sat on a chair, to be honest. Um, but we're just going to start with a little bit of uh, sitting, a little bit of breathing, as we centre and, and ground ourselves, because that's, what's, that, that's what we need, uh, in, my, in my opinion, that's what we need to keep returning to. Uh, regularly in our practices because when everything else feels unsteady and uncertain around us we can use our practice to help us feel steady and balanced and obviously energized and released of tightnesses and tensions all of those sorts of things combined so that we can then move back into the rest of our day and navigate our way through our world as it exists at the moment so we use our yoga practices to support us and that's what we're going to do with the breathing exercise first of all so just come into a comfortable seated position and maybe just take some shoulder rolls backwards a couple of times and then we will roll forwards And then a really nice exercise that you probably, we don't do this so much in yoga, but I want you to take one arm across and either wrap the other one around the front and just pull your shoulder across your body like that. Or you can do it by holding your wrist and just pulling the arm across. So you're just waking up the back of the chest, back of the shoulders. Hold that there, keep breathing. And then we'll do the other side. So you could wrap the other arm around and take the elbow of the arm across or take a hold of not the joint, but just beyond the joint of the wrist and just gently pull the arm across. Very nice. And then come back to centre. Just give the arms another shrug up and down a couple of times. Let's take the hands above the head. Link the fingers. Turn the palms inside out and have a nice big reach upwards towards the ceiling and breathe into the sides of the rib cage. Take a little side bend over towards one side. Come back up to the center, take a little side bend over towards the other side and come back to center, reach right up into the palms and then release, bend the elbows a little bit, release the arms. And again, just give the shoulders a bit of a shrug. So um, then come to rest, come to rest your hands, come to rest your palms either in your lap, you could take chin mudra if you wish to, or you have your hands together in front of you. And close your eyes. Okay. So those of you that are able to, if you've got a bit of a little bit of a cold, a little bit of, a, little bit of hay fever, then um, do your best with your breathing but obviously breathe through your mouth if necessary. You're gonna breathe in through your nose as much as you are able to. And those that are familiar with Ujjayi breath, I would like you to use Ujjayi breath in your practice. And particularly in this first bit of the breathing exercise. So keeping the shoulders relaxed, I want you to notice your sitting bones and allow them to feel fairly balanced, fairly even, because this is what keeps us grounded. It's that connection to whatever is touching down against the earth. And if we feel a little bit uncertain, a little bit wobbly, then practices that keep us balanced are going to help address that. And so your priority here is your sit bones feeling balanced and then the rest of your body able to grow gracefully upwards towards the ceiling. Keep breathing in through the nose and out. Okay, 
Now on your next inhalation, I'd like you to breathe in and then hold your breath just for a count of two at the top of the inhale and then breathe out. And we're going to do that again. Breathe in, just naturally breathing in and then retaining the breath inside your body for a count of two and breathing out. Okay. Now we're going to incorporate, as we breathe now, we're going to incorporate a little bit of pelvic floor lift. So you're going to now breathe in, and as you hold the breath for a count of two, lift the pelvic floor. So perineum or vaginal walls, for, perineum for men, vaginal walls for women. Hold it, hold as you breathe out, please. And then release. So breathe in again. Lift the pelvic floor as you hold your breath for a count of two and then keep holding it as you breathe out and then relax. We're going to do this again one more time. Breathe in, hold and lift the pelvic floor, hold the breath in and then keep the pelvic floor lifted and breathe out. Good. Just take a couple more breaths, just normal, easy, easy exhalations, easy inhalations. Okay, so we're going to switch it up now. So this time we're going to hold the breath out of the body at the end of the exhale. So just follow with me, you're going to breathe in normally. Breathe out naturally and then hold the breath out for a count of two. Okay, so breathe in again. Breathe out again. Hold the breath out and lift the pelvic floor for a count of two. And then release and inhale. Exhale, hold the breath out and lift the pelvic floor. Hmm. I don't know that one. <laughs> That's my Alexa <laughs> joining in and release as you breathe in. Let's do that one more time. Breathe in, breathe out. Hold the breath and lift the pelvic floor. Hold it for a count of two. And then release. Breathe in. Just take some easy breaths. Okay. So we're going to go back to the first one. So you're going to breathe in. Hold the breath for two, lift and hold the pelvic floor. Keep lifting it and breathe out. Then release. Again, breathe in. Hold and lift the pelvic floor for a count of one, two. Hold it and breathe out. Then release. One more time, breathe in. Hold and lift the pelvic floor, hold the breath. Hold it and breathe out. And release. Good, easy breaths. One last round coming up now. Okay, so breathe in. Breathe out. Hold the breath out and lift the pelvic floor. Then release it. Breathe in. Breathe out. Lift the pelvic floor at the end of the exhale. Hold it out, hold it up for a count of two. Then as you release, breathe in. Last round. Breathe out. Hold the breath out and lift the pelvic floor. And then release. Good job. And just let the breath return back to normal. 
Allow the pelvic floor to soften, but maybe notice if you've generated a little bit of heat in that region of your body. And maybe that heat can help to fuel your practice. But what it might also do is help you to feel grounded, help you to feel settled, okay? All right, so let's think about changing how we're sitting. So you can open your eyes, you can bring your uh, legs out in front of you for a moment and maybe turn circles with your toes. And change direction. Good job. And then we're going to come back to sit again. And I don't mind whether you sit cross-legged or legs straight. Again, if you want to alternate with how your legs are crossed, that's okay too. We're going to work a little bit into the shoulders again. That has been our reoccurring theme through the week. So just take care of any shoulder issues, any niggles, any tightnesses, any injuries. Work at your own pace. Do what feels appropriate ask if you're not sure okay so we're just going to start off with taking one hand down to the floor by our side and take the other arm up into the air please and then just let it loop over the top of your head into a little bit of a side bend and allow your head to fall down with you so you feel a bit of a stretch into the side of the neck and there's a little tiny reach into the fingertips nothing too strenuous just yet leave the head here leave the side bend here but take the arm back up and over and bring it horizontal with the floor roughly and then really reach the fingers away so you get this really nice stretch down the side of the neck maybe along the top of the shoulder if it feels good you could lower the arm just a little bit further don't have to move very far and if you want, you stop here or you could go a little bit further. And as ever, whenever we do these neck stretches, we move really slowly. We don't yank, we don't force, we don't move quickly because we can jar the neck muscles and they can go into spasm. So little movements, keep lowering the arm if you want to. And that should feel quite nice. Okay, so we're going to wait for an inhale. You're going to lift your pelvic floor a little bit here and come back up. To sit and just slowly return the head back up to the center okay let's bring the other hand down by the side let's sweep your top arm up and over and lean gently and then slowly let the head begin to go with you into the side stretch a little bit of reach into the side body because that feels nice for the waist it feels nice in the hip perhaps allow the head to go a little bit more and then you can return the arm back so it's horizontal with the earth and reach away into the fingertips as you let the head drop. Okay, remember, move slowly, move gently, be kind to your body. Then you can lower the fingers just a little bit until the stretch feels new again. And then maybe a little bit more. And remember, stop at a pace that feels good and really enjoy these new sensations in the neck. We can release a lot of the tension when we feel like we're carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. Okay, so a little bit of lift to the pelvic floor. Breathe in and come back up. Nice. Okay, so we should feel a little bit easier and releasing a little bit around the neck. Take, I want you, I hope you can see me. So I, I want you to hold your wrists like this. So a wrist, wrist lock. But you're going to do that behind your back now. If that's comfortable for you, you could just hold the opposite hand. You could link the fingers together. It doesn't matter which way that you've gone, but I want you to lengthen your arms behind you. And I'd like you to try to bring your elbows closer together and notice how this lifts your chest. So you really feel that you can take the back of the heart forwards into the front of the body arms lengthening down shoulders lengthening down and enjoy all that open space that you're creating across the upper part of your body good job and then gently release just bring the arms back carefully and then sweep the arms up and above your head just the same as we did earlier link the fingers turn the palms inside out create a little bit of space along the sides of your waist stay even on your sit bones maybe lift the pelvic floor a little bit we're taking a small twist here so just a little turn don't mind which way you go 
but turn your body to look over one, uh, one direction of your mat and then come back up to the center and turn the body gently. Notice that when you lift the pelvic floor, you just create a little bit of stability in the uh, lumbar spine, maybe to help to protect it. So you don't want to over rotate there and keep the rotation in the, around the ribs, the thoracic spine upwards. Okay, come back to the center, release the hands out wide, really enjoy that release. And then bring the fingertips to the floor, maybe in front of you, and you can crawl the hands forwards and just come down to wherever you feel comfortable. If your head touches the ground, great, but don't force it down there if it doesn't. Keep your sit bones on whatever surface it is that they are sitting against. So try not to roll so far forwards that you lose the connection of your sit bones against the ground. Okay, when you are ready, take a breath in and come up. If your legs are crossed, we all need to do this on the other side. So change the cross of the legs, please. And we're just going to fold forward. So keeping the sit bones grounded, crawling the fingertips forwards. Maybe when you kept some length into the belly, the navel feels spacious. Then you can drop the chin to the chest and allow the upper body to fold more deeply. But again, just take care of the hips, take care of the flexion for the spine. Take another breath in and another breath out. And then on an inhalation, slowly walk the hands back in towards you. Good job, and then you can come over onto all fours, please. Okay, so maybe if you need it, you could double up your mat underneath your knees or, or put a blanket underneath the knees. We're going to stay in this position um, for a little bit. And we're going to do a little bit of kind of, I call them shoulder clocks. Sometimes we do shoulder clocks at the wall. Um, but this is a bit like searching for something under the bed. It's that one. So what we're going to do first of all is take the right hand a little bit further along the, the mat. So a little bit further than your shoulders. And then you're going to slide your left arm underneath and bring the whole of the left arm up to the shoulder and the side of your face onto, or the side of your head onto the mat. You might need to put maybe a block or something underneath your head if you feel that you need a little bit of extra height. Now you could just leave your right hand tripod fingers on the floor, press gently into the fingertips to roll the right shoulder back. So you get that nice stretch across the back of the shoulders. Bottom should be in the air. You can have your toes untucked or tucked, it doesn't matter. Then for those of you that would like to go a little bit further, you could take your right arm straight up to the ceiling and maybe turn your gaze to look up towards your thumb. But take it easy, make sure that you can breathe. Some of you might prefer to be in a similar position to this, but to wrap the arm around the back of the waist if we want to. Okay, then there's one final stage to come. Remember, you can stop at any stage you like. The last stage is quite nice though. It's just to sweep the arm nearly alongside the ear and reach the fingertips forward. So you're just creating a little bit more opening into the shoulders. It might not be that you like this one so much, so maybe bring the hand up to the ceiling or back into one of the positions that you prefer. All right, so take another breath. Good job, let's bring the right hand back close towards the face. We're going to lift up and then take the left hand, so make sure the right hand's positioned comfortably for you, and then take the left hand all the way up to the ceiling. So you're just releasing and revolving the spine the other way. And then you can come back down. Good job. And we'll do the same on the other side. So take the left hand just a little bit further forward so there's space. And then thread the right arm underneath and bring the whole of the back of the arm, including the shoulder and the side of the head onto your mat. Remember you could just have your fingertips on the floor somewhere alongside the, the face if you like, and gently press into the fingertips to take 
the left shoulder back and it's almost as though you're trying to roll yourself backwards and get that nice stretch across the back of the shoulder space. You could stay here or you could take the left hand straight up to the sky. Remember all of these are options, you can play, you can explore. You might want to take the left hand around the back of the waist and that's quite a nice preparation for some of the poses that we are going to play around with a bit later. Okay, those that want to can cartwheel the left arm alongside the ear and it's kind of interesting when we get here to see what, what mobility we have in our shoulders, what feels good, what feels a little bit tight maybe. Nice. And then let's come back up. So reach the left arm up and then put the left hand back down onto the mat. Press down to lift yourself up. Repositioning the left hand maybe in a bit more of a comfortable position to then breathe in and take the right hand up to the ceiling, turning the body around to the side, looking up towards the thumb. Very nice. And then coming back down. Good job. Place both hands on the floor. Let's get off your knees. So tuck your toes under. Take your bottom back. Lift up both knees and just gently unwind the back of your legs into a little bit of a downward dog. Maybe have a little bit of a pedal with the heels and a little dance of the hips from side to side. Okay, I'm going to stay here for three more breaths. So if you like, you can stationary your down dog and just press the sit bones back and lengthen the arms and enjoy all this lovely space and energy that's in your arms and in your shoulders. Good job. So then we're going to look forwards to where the hands are and just slowly walk your feet towards your hands. Feet about hips width apart initially, bending the knees as much as you need to. Let the tummy rest on the top of the thighs and allow the head to hang, the chin towards the chest, the arms to dangle down towards the ground. No big effort in the arms, just all the effort in the bent knees maybe keeping out some of the tension from the back, but lifting the sit bones, lengthening the back of the thigh bones upwards. All right, so we're going to inhale and come up to stand. So you can walk the hands up the front of your legs if you like, and slowly unwind yourself to being upright and take the arms wide and bring the palms together above the top of your head. Maybe look up if it feels okay for your neck. Just look forwards if it doesn't. Then breathe out when you're ready and gently bring the hands down towards the front of your heart space and close your eyes. And just for a moment or two, take a few breaths and begin to think about the balance of your body and the connection of both feet into the earth. and encourage your body weight to be evenly distributed between left and right foot, and between the front and the back of each foot. Have a little tiny lift to the inner arch of the foot, and see if that can help to stabilize the ankles and the knees, so that you feel grounded and secure, attached firmly to the earth, but tall and graceful, taking up your rightful space. Just have a slight lift to the front of the heart. So we allow ourselves to begin to lead from the heart space and the energy that this contains. And then before we restart re our practice, I want you to think of two reasons for your practicing today, two reasons for bringing you to your mat. One can be personal to you, you as an individual. And then the second, I want you to think of someone who would benefit from the energy of your practice so that you can bring them to mind be someone that you know as, as much as someone that you don't know. 
maybe a friend, maybe a family member, someone who you feel would benefit from the energy of this practice and you can bring them to mind during different stages of it. Okay. Well done, everyone. So let's take an inhalation and lift the hands up towards the ceiling and look up towards your thumbs again. As you breathe out, release your arms out wide to the sides and bring the fingers, link the fingers behind the back of your body and roll your shoulders back. Open the chest up a little bit more, lengthen the tailbone down and lift the heart up towards the ceiling. Just create lots of space. Then when you're ready, release the hands, bring them up above your head again, and then make sure that you've got space around you to bring your arms to out to the sides, about shoulder height. And you're going to breathe in and come up onto your tiptoes now. Squeeze your calf muscles, and then breathe out to gently come down. Breathe in again, come up onto your tiptoes. Either hold this here, or take a little bit of a twist. So for me, I'm just going to be careful of the wall behind me, but just gently make sure that you're not going to hurt yourself to by twisting. And then inhale, come back to the centre. Let's try this with a little bit of pelvic floor lift. So lift the pelvic floor, and as you breathe out, turn. and See whether that lift can hold you a little bit more stable. Good, doing brilliant. And come back to the centre. And as you exhale, lower the heels, lower the arms, and give the shoulders a little bit of a shrug again. Nicely done. Starting to get a little bit warmer, hopefully. Come and stand near the top of your mat, please, everyone. Bring your palms together in front of your heart. Take an inhalation and lift the hands up. And as you breathe out, come all the way down to the ground. Let the head hang. Uttanasana. Breathe in, come into Ardha Uttanasana. So fingertips on the floor or hands on the shins. Lift the sit bones and look along the floor in front. Then pop the hands down on the floor and step back into a plank. So you can hover the shoulders over the wrists. Make sure the heels are pressed back and you haven't got your bottom too high in the air and nor too low down. So just make sure there's a nice line of stability for your upper body and for your torso. Very good. Pop your knees down onto the floor. Take your bottom backwards towards your heels and slowly swoop your way through to lay on your tummy. As you breathe in, lift yourself up. As you breathe out, gently come down. This time, as you breathe in, stay in your cobra position, hands on the floor, lift up, but also lift your feet. Hold this here, breathe in. As you breathe out, bring the ankles together. As you breathe in, open the feet wide. As you breathe out, bring the ankles together, nice. Breathe in, open the feet as wide as you can. Last one, bring the ankles together. And then release back down, nice. Lift up to your hands and knees. Tuck your toes under and find a downward dog, please. Let the sit bones move back and up. Draw the navel in towards the spine. Press the palms, the index finger and thumb side of the palm, particularly into the floor. And let the shoulders lengthen. Good, take the right foot up to the sky behind you and step it up towards the top of your mat. Pop your left knee down onto the ground, support it if you need a bit of extra comfort, and pop your hands onto the shin, on, sorry, onto the knee, just, uh, just above the knee. Think about, as you point the tailbone down, lift the low ribs in and up, and then you work towards straightening the arms. Good, hold that position, release the hands and bring them up. Just gaze forwards, and hold. Feel the stability in your core, maybe lift your pelvic floor if that helps you to stay connected. Then breathe in and bow down to the ground. Good job. Lift up the back knee to step forwards and come into a half forward fold. 
Breathe out to fold down towards the legs. Breathe in, arms come wide, bring them all the way up to the sky. And look up at your thumbs. Breathe out and bring the hands down to the heart. And pause here for a moment. Maybe enjoy whatever sensation, whatever heat or energy that you can feel starting to move in your body. All right, other side. Breathe in, hands come up, look thumbs. Breathe out to fold down towards the top of your legs. Halfway lift, hands to shins, breathe in. Breathe out, step back to plank again. We're gonna add a little variation. We're gonna come into a side plank this time. So either roll the toes to the right, so they both point to the right. You have one foot in front of the other, or you could bring the right foot a little bit further into the middle of the mat, or you can stack the feet, and you're gonna bring the right arm up to the sky if you can. Nice. Hold this here. Good job. Then come back down with the right hand and over onto the other side. Left hand lifts. Keep the right hip lifting. Do not let the middle of the body drop. Draw the navel in. Good. Come back to the centre. Very nice. Then so we're into our plank. We're going to pop the knees down onto the floor. And this time leave the bottom in the air and bring the chin and the chest down to the ground. Slide through so that you're laying on your tummy, your legs lengthen out behind you. And if you can, link the fingers behind the back or just hold the hands or hold the wrists. Roll the shoulders back and we're going to take three breaths, lifting upper and lower body. Coming up and down. One, two more times, breathe in. Feet lift, bring the heels of the, um, or the ankles together and down. One more time, breathe in and come down. Good. Release the hands, pop the hands under the shoulders and this time we're going to either lift up into um, an upward dog or you can tra just transition back into downward dog if you prefer. So I'm going to bring my hands just alongside my chest, my, my rib cage. And I want you to have the tops of your feet on the floor and the legs really firm, okay? So firm the back of the legs, firm the buttocks. Start to lift up. So you could just stop in a kind of mini cobra or you could lift up to straighten the legs, lift the front of the hips up, press into the palms, lift the chest and lift the chin a little bit. Firm the legs. Good. Now soften the knees just a bit. Take the bottom back, tucking under the toes, and everybody meet in downward dog, please. Superb. Left foot lifted up to the sky. Step it through to the top of your mat and drop your right knee on the ground. Lift up onto the thigh, one palm on top of the other, and then it's as though you want to take your body away from the top of the thigh, and you do that by pointing the tailbone down, lifting the front of the hips and the low ribs into the body and straightening the arms. So you just feel this nice sensation on the front of the right hip. Doesn't have to be a big lunge. You could maintain that steadiness there and lunge a bit deeper if you want to, but you must contain this integrity that's within the middle of the pelvis and um, the lower abdomen. If you want, sweep the arms up above the head and just hold this here for a breath. Good job. Breathe in. As you breathe out, bow down, hands to the top of the mat. Lift up the back knee to step forwards. Half forward fold when you get there. Full forward fold as you breathe out. As you breathe in, hands come together above the head. As you breathe out, hands lower down, close the eyes. So again, notice whatever there is to notice. Left side of the body, right side of the body. Allow the heart to beat freely behind your hands and enjoy. Good. 
Okay, so let's open the eyes and bring the hands to the hips. Leave the right leg where it is and take a big long stride back to the end of your mat with your left leg. Have your left heel turned out or the left toes turned out, but square the hips as much as you can to the top of your mat and begin to bend your right knee for warrior one. Take it easy here, turn your body slightly to the left if that helps you um, with the sensation in your lower back. Bring the hands up above the head. You can have your palms together or palms apart. I don't mind, whatever is good for you. If you want to look up to between your hands, that too is fine. But I'm more worried about the legs. I want you to think about pressing into the outside edge of the left foot and keeping the right thigh nice and firm and the tailbone pointing down. Good. Now gently release. The hands come behind your back. Straighten the front leg and link the fingers behind your back and straighten the arms if you can. Start to step or baby step the left foot in so that you can square your hips to the top of the mat even more. Bend your right knee a little bit and fold towards the top of the thigh. Lifting the hands up behind you if you can or keep them close to your body if you prefer. You can drop your chin towards your chest. And if you want to open up the back of the right knee, go for it, for a kind of modified or a, a variation on Pajvatanasana. Both legs nice and strong. Make sure the back leg is working just as well as the front. And make sure you're pressing into the inside edge of the front foot. Okay, let's lift up a little bit, bend the right knee, and release the hands down to frame the front foot. Lift up the back heel and wiggle the back leg back so you're into a nice long lunge. Leave the left hand onto the floor and take the right hand up towards the ceiling. Turn the body as much as you can. You're looking towards the right or you're looking up towards your thumb. Very nice. Gently bring that hand back down. Step back into a plank, shoulders over the wrists, and then lift the right leg off of the floor. We did this a lot the other day, so it'll be familiar. Hold this here. See if you can come down into Chaturanga with one leg, and if not, just come down to lay on your tummy, untuck your toes, and find an upward dog or a cobra. Don't mind which one. Then soft knees as you come back into downward dog. And hold this and breathe. Back body lengthens, tailbone lifts, navel draws in. Good. And when we come back into these lovely still opportunities for stillness in these poses, we look for the steadiness, we find the breath again, we enjoy. Okay, so we're going to take the left foot up to the sky, reach it up high and step it up towards the top of your mat. Give it a helping hand if it needs it. Uh, maybe baby step the right foot in slightly, but turn the right toes out. We're prepping for warrior one on this side. So have the right toes turned out at an angle. Bend the left knee, lift yourself up, firm the back leg, press into the outside edge of the back foot. Square the hips if you can, but don't force that to happen. And either hands at the heart or hands above the head. You can separate the palms if that's better for your shoulders. And you don't need to look up if you've got higher leg blood pressure. Gaze should always be forwards. You can keep your hands at your heart as well to save the effort. Good job. I always love to see people modifying the practice and making sure that it suits them and their, and their body and their needs. So never be afraid of doing, doing what you know. Maybe you've practiced in class something a little bit different. That's okay. Okay, another breath in. Release the hands behind the back of your body again. Either link fingers or hold the opposite elbow. You could take a reverse prayer pose here if you like. I like to shorten the stance a bit, so baby step in the right foot a little, square the hips towards the top of the mat, 
bend the right the left knee sorry and then begin to fold forwards towards the left thigh when you feel that you've gone deep enough let the chin fall towards the chest maybe lift the hands off the back body if you can and straighten the left leg to your own measure keep pressing into the inside edge of the left foot outside edge of the back foot just hold it here for a couple of breaths doing brilliantly well done everyone good job and then let's bend the left knee release the hands to frame the front foot spin up the right heel to step it or slide it or wiggle it back so that you're into this lovely long lunge leave your right hand on the floor you could put it onto a brick or something if you need height and then your left hand's going to spin up towards the sky keep the left knee bent right heel pressing back don't let the hips collapse in the middle of your body good job another breath in here and then lower the left hand down when you're ready step back to a three-legged plank okay so straight into it either stay here then come down into cobra or if you want to chaturanga and then we're up dog strong arms chest lifts and then downward dog and again just press the pause button find your body settling into the pose settling into some stillness if you need to take this opportunity to come into child's pose for a little bit of a rest you can do good job okay so let's look towards where the fingers are and you can either walk step or jump your feet to the top of your mat if you like when you're here bring your feet together please so big toe joints together let the inner thighs touch allow the shins to drop forwards and the bottom to sink behind you then if you've got space take the arms straight out in front of you alongside your ears for a kind of Ardha Utkatasana squeeze the inner thighs let the sit bones drop reach the fingers forwards and then gently inhale and come up to stand good job bring the hands to the heart and close your eyes all right so if you want to take a minute to have a quick drink if you need a drink or just to press pause for a minute i'll come and check on you all all right well done. <laughs> okay, so we're back to the top of the mat. And we're going to work with, um, or we're going to work towards a standing balance. There are going to be modifications for everybody. So you will be able to come into a variation of it in a sec. You might want your strap, so you could have that near the top of your mat just in case you need that you might not if you can bind as if if you can come into a pajvakanasana and bind your hands behind your back you won't be able you won't probably need your strap okay so let's start back into uh, with the hands in anjali mudra standing evenly on the feet closing the eyes just assessing weight distribution and and balance and alignment and we really do, we really are able to fine tune our awareness just through learning to stand on our own two feet. Okay, so then bringing the hands down to the hips and opening, opening your eyes. So a lot of what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my back to you so, that's what you, so you can see what's behind my body in just a sec. So I want you to leave your right foot where it is and take a really long stride back because we're going to do warrior two. Okay, so bend your right knee 
have your left toes turned out slightly behind you and let the right hip sink but keep the tailbone pointed down a little bit of lift to the pelvic floor if you like and the spine stay nice and upright then take the right hand to the point of the top right hand corner of your mat your left hand to point to the back left hand corner and look down the right fingertips into the distance and just hold this here and this just might be your go-to pose this might be one that makes you feel comfortable and familiar okay so we're going to transition to pose rakanasana in just a sec you could use a brick here for your hand to go on but first stage as always is right forearm onto the thigh and cartwheeling the left arm alongside the ear. Now, if you need to, you could bring the left hand onto the hip or the back of the sacrum here for a little bit less um, effort into the left shoulder. Those of you that have got the arm extended, let the head fall back so that you can look towards your right thumb. Very nice. Then bring the hand straight up to the ceiling, everyone. Straighten. The right leg and bring the right hand onto the shin for triangle pose and hold this here good job then looking down taking an inhalation and floating back up warrior two nice then bring the hands to the hips and we'll do that little sequence on the other side. So step the left foot forwards, find your mountain pose. You can have hands down by your sides if you like. Gaze at something in, in front of you at eye level so that this can hold your focus, steady your gaze. Okay, hands to hips. Left foot stays where it is stride big step back right foot so longer than you would for a warrior one bending the left knee torso stays upright tailbone points down front of the hips lift up and chest is open left hand to top left hand corner right hand to back right look down left fingertips into the distance and breathe Beautiful. So bend the left knee a little bit more, let the left hip sink a little bit more, tailbone down, externally rotate the right thigh. Good. Now, forearm onto the left thigh. Cartwheel the left arm alongside the ear or rest it onto the back of the body. If you can see yourself, in your, in your little gallery picture. I know I said, get rid of them, but this is such a great opportunity to look at the shapes that your body is making in these poses. Good job, hold this here again. Another breath. And then bring the right arm straight up to the ceiling. Straighten the left leg and bring the left hand down onto the shin or wherever you can reach. A block is a good thing to have here too. Keep turning the rib cage. Look up towards your right thumb. Good. And then let's look down. Let's take an inhalation to bend the front knee, come back to warrior two. Good. And then hands to hips and step towards the top of your mat and come back to mountain pose. Find that dristi, that focal point on the wall. And breathe. Okay. So we're going to come back into Pajvakanasana and this time we'll work towards binding the pose if you wish to. So right foot again is going to be the front foot, maybe put the hands on the hips if that helps. Bend the right knee a little bit, big stride back down through the left with the left leg behind you. Bend the right knee and if you want to you're going to take a break if you need it to the outside edge of your uh, right foot. Okay, so we always begin in a bit of warrior two. 
before bringing the right hand down and the left arm alongside the ear. So you could rest onto the, the forearm onto the thigh like we did previously. Those that want to go for binding the pose, you're going to take your left hand around the back of your waist here. So this is the key, not around the bottom. You don't want it down here. You want it around the back of the waist. The right arm, you're going to internally rotate and take underneath your thigh and bring it up and reach back for your hand to bind the pose. Okay, so let's just, I'm going to have a check on yours, so stay there. Well done. If you can't find your hand, don't worry. Maybe use your strap or just stay in the Pajrakanasana with the left arm alongside your ear. Beautiful. Okay, some of you will feel confident to come into a bird of paradise pose. So from here, you must have the bind. And then with little baby steps, you need to take your left foot to the top of your mat. Ground the left foot into the floor, lift up onto the right tiptoes. And then begin to stand up. So I'll give an alternative in just a sec for those that haven't got the bind. Just have a little bit of a play with this. You can work towards straightening the leg. Those that haven't got the bind, your alternative is still to stand on the left leg, to bring the right leg up, to open it out wide like a book, and maybe cradle the leg, maybe use your strap and straighten the leg out to the side, like a bit of, like a bit of Hastanga Padanganasana. Good, have a play. I know lots of you like playing around with this in the class. So it takes some time. Don't worry, don't get frustrated. Just keep experimenting. But the key is in that bind and it needs to be underneath your thigh rather than underneath your bottom. Good job. This is where you need like a helpful, a helpful uh, family member, just sometimes to come and <laughs> help you stand up for it. Okay, all right, take a rest. Everybody, stand with your feet about hips width apart, bend the knees and just hang down. Maybe hold the opposite elbows and have a little sway from side to side. Okay, come back to centre, roll up. Okay, so other side. So remember, all the stages are just as valid as the final pose. So even if you have a go at the final pose and don't quite get there today, don't panic because all of the preparation is what we need to be able to get to so the hip opening, the shoulder openings, I mean, if you're struggling with a shoulder injury at the moment, this isn't really the pose for you. And if you haven't got a strap, for instance, and you need one, that's it, that would be a good excuse to get one. Um, all sorts of things. So please don't get frustrated. Please just work within what your body is able to do today. Okay, so hands on the hips. We're going to leave the left foot nice and rounded at the top of the mat and step back with the right foot. So we can come into the warrior two position for the legs. You might want to just bring the forearm onto the thigh. Some of you can bring the hand down to the outside of the foot. Some of you, I need a block for this. It just gets a bit crunchy into my hip if I try to bring my hand all the way to the floor. Right arm alongside the ear just to set the pose and to set the space in the hip and the side of the, the waist and the arm. And it might be that you just stay here and explore this. Or taking the arm around the back of the body, bringing the left arm in the front of the thigh, internally rotating the arm because you want the crease of your elbow to be underneath your thigh. And then bringing the hands behind, you might find that you can find this hand more easily. We're staying here to Come back, bring the chest back, turn the head, look up, or look to where your thumb would have been. Hold it here if this is the pose for you. Or you can 
Bend the right knee, step the right foot up to the top of the mat, round into the right foot and start to float the left leg up off of the floor. Find your steady, find that dristy and maybe work towards straightening the, the left leg. Remember those that aren't working with the bind and are looking for an alternative is to stand on your right leg to lift your left open the knee out wide either stay here with a balance or you can straighten the leg hold the back of the thigh and maybe point the toe okay so loads of alternatives but they're still kind of working the same positions of the pose but maybe not as strong have a play have as much of a play as you'd like and then have a rest well done really nicely done okay so come out when you're ready and down into ragdoll so feet nice and wide hold the opposite elbows bend the knees let the body dangle down and sway it from side to side just release any tightness any tightness in the shoulders or the upper body chin to chest let gravity do the work here let gravity create space okay and then from here don't come up to stand but just start to bend the knees some more maybe lift the heels off the floor bring the hips down and the hands to the mat so you're into a bit of a crouch into a bit of a, a um i forgot what the word is it's gone from me now but we're going to play with malasana so for this one i like to bring the heels of my feet together. So if I turn around, you'll be able to see. And my toes out to the sides a little bit, so hopefully you can kind of see that position. Then you can either just bring your hands onto the floor or onto a brick, and let the chin drop towards the chest. Or if you want to go deeper, you can fold yourself a little bit closer down towards the floor if you like. Some of you will be able to take your arms around the front of the shins and just maybe the backs of the hands on the floor as you reach the hands, I'll turn around this way, as you reach the hands backwards. Some of you might hold the hands around the back of the heels and bring the knees to hug the upper arms, chin to the chest. Manasala is bead pose. You're just making yourself very small into a little bead shape. Good job. And then let's gently lift and release and come to sit on your bottom. <laughs> as elegantly as that. Okay, so legs out nice and straight. Heels away. If you need to sit on something, a blanket or a block, that's okay. Bring your hands down by your sides and just sit for a moment in Dandasan. So sit bones level and even, backs of the legs pressing into the floor, heels away, toes high. Don't worry if the hands don't touch or if the elbows have to bend because the arms are long. Just think about the arms as just enabling the, the, the alignment of the spine, not supporting you. you. Don't need them. You want to use your core, use your pelvic floor, Stay lifted, stay strong from the center of your being. Okay. Then, when you're ready, let's take the hands behind. Look at where your knees are on your mat. So you should have, sorry, your fingertips pointing towards your body, but your hands just slightly behind. Then look at where your knees are and put your feet in that position. Then you can bend your elbows, lift your chest and just lean back and that might create a really nice sensation for the shoulders, a little bit of a stretch maybe. For those that want to go a little bit further, you could lift your hips into a tabletop. So press the palms into the floor, 
firm the back body, you can let the head look up at the ceiling. Good. And for those that want to come into a reverse plank, you could straighten the legs, keep the ankles together and lift the hips. Hold this here for another breath, everyone. And then gently lower down. Good, okay. Maybe just cross the ankles, give the wrists a little bit of a shake and fold forwards into a soft, easy pose for, for, forward fold. All right, inhale to come up. Bring the knees so that the knees are bent. Hold underneath the thighs and sit up nice and tall. Sit back onto your sit bones and hover your feet off the floor. So we're coming into Navasana. It might be that you just stay here. Those that want to can bring the shins up and keep lifting the chest, but staying as relaxed in the shoulders as you can. If you want, you can let go of the legs and just hold this here. Or another option, you can hold the legs again and work towards straightening them. So feel free to play, feel free to do what you feel comfortable with. If you are strong in the belly, keep lifting the belly, lift the pelvic floor, and maybe release the hands away from the legs just for a breath or two. The more if you're wobbly, good job. And then cross your ankles, you've done brilliantly, and roll yourself forwards. Take another lovely breath. Okay, take an inhale when you're ready and come up. All right, so we're going to take an inversion and the two options that you have available to you are either Rupita Karani. So if you have, even if you don't have a wall, you could put a cushion or a blanket or brick underneath uh, the back of your hips. So I'll demonstrate that first of all. So I'll go, I'll go through all the options before you come down. So you could just lie with your legs up in the air and you could use a wall to help you do that. So shuffle over to the wall and sort of swing your legs up as you lie down. Another option is to put a brick underneath the back of your sacrum. So you've got a little kind of support, that little arch, and then the feet can go up. Or uh, the third option is to come into a shoulder stand. Now, if you've, um, if you've got your blanket to hand, then it's quite a nice idea to, um, to put that on your mat and then to fold that your mat over the top so please only do this do a shoulder stand if you are um, have been practicing it in your normal class or I've practiced it with you before so don't try it basically if you're brand new to it and I haven't seen you practice this before do for Peter Karani instead those of you okay so if you're familiar with shoulder stand and you want to take it you can if you're not familiar with doing it this way the padding just you want to help support your shoulders but also keep uh, the space in the vertebra of the neck so blanket wrapped up in your mat is great and you want your shoulders to be on the folded bit but your head to be on the flatter bit and then so that when you come up you can take your body weight into the shoulders rather than uh, the, the head okay so have a play with coming up into a shoulder stand if you want to you can come into halasana in a minute i'll give you some cues for that if you want but just take your time and do what you feel that you want to do today it might be that 
ladies, if you're menstruating this week, you might not feel like going upside down today, especially if it's day one or two. Um, you might feel that just legs up in the air is a, is a more supportive and restorative practice for you today. It's really important that we listen to the energies of our body and sometimes we've got the energy and the strength to, to lift up into an inversion. Because what we've got to remember while we're here is that we mustn't collapse. We have to use all of our energy to send it up to the soles of the feet, to spread out the balls of the feet and to really energetically lift the feet up towards the ceiling if that's available to you. And it becomes a stronger practice when we really keep the energy or the awareness of the energy. If we're just hanging around with our feet dangling in the air in the shoulder stand and all of the gravitational pull of the earth is sending all our body weight into the top part of the spine and the shoulders and that's not really going to benefit us we want to keep active and trying to actively move away from the downward pull of, of, of gravity those of you that are competent and comfortable in a shoulder stand and want to take your feet back into halasana, then please have a uh, experiment with that. Stay in Vipita Karani, those of you with legs up the wall, just luxuriate there for a little bit longer. It's gotta be, it's gotta be my, in my top five. Love, love a bit of Vipita Karani. Okay, so then if you are in a shoulder stand, have your hands on the back of your body and support yourself as you gently roll yourself back down and just lie down, stay lying for a moment just to let your body rebalance itself. Carla, we're going to do fish pose next. So if you want to do fish pose with Padmasana, you're very welcome to with your lotus legs. Okay, so then for everybody, if you're in Vipita Karani, bring yourself away from the wall and come back to your mat. And then a little bit of fish pose, especially for those that have done a uh, shoulder stand. So if you didn't do shoulder stand and you don't enjoy this pose, then leave it out. So you could sit on your hands, Lower yourself down onto your elbows, lift the chest, point the toes, and let the head roll back. Don't let the head touch the floor if you're going to drop weight into it. And keep active through the upper body, so elbows pressing into the floor, chest lifted, front of the legs long. All right. And then let's bring chin to chest and slowly lift ourselves back up. And we're going to just counterpose that so everybody's going to come into Paschimottanasana. So if you want to use a strap here to hold your feet, if you want to sit on something, if that helps you with the tilt of your pelvis, that's okay. Um, untuck the flesh of your bottom. Breathe in and bring your arms up, everybody to above your head. And then lower them out in front of you, shoulder height. As you breathe out, draw the navel in, reach the fingertips forwards, and then you can bring the hands down to the ground, chin towards your chest, and then think about moving the crown of your head in the direction of your toes. Not worried about how low you come, not worried about whether you can fold yourself in half, but just thinking about lengthening the back of the body, relaxing the shoulders, Okay, and then we're going to take one more lovely breath here. Let 
let's inhale our way back up. We're slowly unwinding, lifting from the belly, fingertips or hands to the floor behind. Just lean back into the hands as you lift the chest. And then when you come down to lie, we're going to spend the rest of the class lying down. We'll do a bit of a lying twist and then into Shavasana. So if you want a blanket or an eye pillow or anything else to be comfortable, then grab that and have that nearby. Um, <clears throat> For those of you, if you, we, we, as always, I'm, I'm not very good at sticking to time. So if you have to run before the end of Shavasana, then um, thank you very much for coming and look forward to seeing you again, maybe tomorrow. But if you don't mind hanging around, we're probably going to finish about five minutes later than we normally do. Um, so let's bring the knees bent. And in fact, let's, we're going to do it like we're going to do a line twist like this. So what I want you to do, everybody, is roll over onto your right hand side. You can put something underneath your head if you need it, but you probably you won't need it in a minute much. Have your knees stacked one on top of the other. The knees bend at right angles, but you can bring the knees closer up towards your belly if you want a stronger twist. And then your left arm is going to come all the way up and over and just let it come out behind you. You can bend the arm, you don't have to have it flat, you don't have to have it straight. You could use your right hand just to weigh the top of the left knee down, and you can turn your head. If you did put something underneath your head, then I would probably take it out now. Just stay here and breathe. Okay, so when you're ready, bringing your gaze and your left hand, your left arm back up and over. Nice. And then we're going to roll over onto the left side and do the same thing that way. So get yourself nice and comfy. Knees stacked. Thighs can come in towards the body if you need to. Wait for a breath. And as you inhale, take the right arm all the way up and out behind to your own comfort level. So if you, if you find that this is too strong, maybe bend the elbow, maybe bring the arm closer to the side of your body. Just enjoy the space that you're creating across the upper part of the, the chest, the shoulder region. Maybe turn the gaze in the direction of your right hand. And spend some moments breathing. Just being. Okay, so on your next breath in, return your body back to lying on your side. Well done. And then you can return to lying on your back. And just sorting yourself out, making yourself nice and comfortable. Maybe hug the knees in towards your chest, have a little rock across the back body. And then you can slide your feet away from you down towards the corners of your mat, rolling your toes out to the sides, your palms up towards the ceiling, and just letting your body sink and settle into stillness.
Just take some breaths, encouraging the length of the exhalation to increase. As you lie in Shavasana, bring back to mind the person, the someone that you dedicated your practice to this morning. And with them in your mind's eye, remember this. The Buddha says thousands of candles can be lighted from a single candle and the life of the single candle will not be shortened. Happiness never decreased by being shared. So by dedicating your practice to someone or something, you're sharing that positive energy. Energy that you've cultivated on your mat by showing up and committing to your practice and then energy that you're able to share with the community and the world around you. Okay, so I'd like you to bring your awareness back into your room. 
And I'd like you to become aware of your fingers and your toes. And start to move them as you turn your head also from side to side. When you feel ready, take a stretch out any way that feels good. And then you can bend your knees and roll yourself to one side as you gently and slowly make yourself round and come up to sit when you're ready. All right. We're going to close the practice with a single chant of own just to kind of distribute that the energy of the practice out into the world a little bit more. So you're going to take the fingertips to the floor next to you. I'd like you to breathe in and bring your hands up above your head and the palms come together. Then as you breathe out, bring the hands down and you can either leave them resting in front of your heart or you can rest them down into your lap, whatever is good for you. Maybe close your eyes, relax your face. Take a nice deep breath in. Oh. And while the sound of your own resonates within and around you, bring your palms together in front of your chest and bow your head towards your hands. Just breathe in and out in the lovely stillness and space that your practice has provided you. And then taking another breath in, opening your eyes. Well done. Namaste to you all. Thank you very much for practicing this morning. Have a super rest of the day and I will look forward to seeing you maybe tomorrow, maybe for another morning practice, maybe a 10 o'clock practice.